All right. Hello, hello, ESA Winter. Uh, I'm Sunny Muffin, and we're going to be doing some Cocoon uh, this morning. Uh, we did meet the incentive to upgrade this run to All Moon Ancestors, so we'll be doing that extended category. Uh, joining me today, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm uh, Bowden. I've done like one run of this game, and yeah, it's going to be fun. Perfect. That means you're pretty much a pro, right? <laughs> yeah, won't get any better than this, I guess. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. There's a little bit of a cutscene here before we start time. Uh, but yeah, this game is just like a, like isometric style puzzle game. And yeah, we're going to be going through and collecting all 11 moon ancestors and beating the game. So yeah, we're just going to hop right into it. Uh, coming out of our of our cocoon right here. So you, you see the theme of the game showing through. Uh, our little character is going to pop out and then time is going to start on first movement. So we're going to go ahead and start time. I hit the button. All right, all that. That button is so satisfying. That's like the best part about ESA. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, there's like a giant button right here that's really satisfying to start and stop your run with. Oh, very tactile. I, I quite enjoy that. Yeah. We're just uh, doing the little introduction to the game. Uh, the unique part of this game is that there is only one button. You get an interact button. Um, I do map it to every button on my controller, though, so you can just mash as much as possible. Um, and really, the name of the game is just like optimizing your movement, taking as clean a lines as possible in this first section, and then just not forgetting the puzzles. The puzzles are the important part. Uh, so here's our first puzzle. This is uh, just like baby's first puzzle. We got to go through here, and we're going to be just manipulating these little lift platforms to go across this uh, this chasm here. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll be Hopping into the game, the game starts pretty slow. Uh, that's like one of the big, um, I guess, points of criticism for it, but it does get just like absolutely mind bending and insane by the end of the game. And like, uh, yeah, it's, it's super, super cool. So we're gonna be here in the red world and we're introduced to the game's primary mechanic here in just one second. Um, you're gonna see these platforms all over the game and they basically throw you out of the world that you are in and now we're on the exterior. And so we're, this is our red orb here, very, very red. Um, if you see orange, that's probably incorrect. It's, it's definitely red. I'm not gonna comment on that. <laughs> Actually got a, a topical donation from you here. Uh, we've got Zet coming in with $50. It says, good morning from the German restream. Sorry, I cannot be there with you on the couch, Sonny, but you are absolutely smashing it. The orb is orange. Oh, Zet, it's okay to be wrong. <laughs> Much love to Zet, though. Uh, fantastic guy. Um, I wish, wish he was here with us. We should have got those uh, cardboard cutouts from Winter uh, 22. We could have had a Zet cutout. That would have been sweet. Yeah, just going through the world here, solving some pretty basic puzzles. Um, yeah, this is just the game introducing you to just the various ways that we're going to be interacting with the world. Um, so like here, we use the orb to activate one of these switches. Um, whenever we put it on one of those, something is going to happen. In this case, the bridges pop out. Um, but then we have to use the lift and just kind of get along over to the side. Now we have these uh, fun little like marble run type things. I don't know if you ever were a kid playing with the marble things where you drop it in the top. Uh, basically the same concept. So we're going to be dropping our world, our red world, and throwing it into these pipes. And then we just have to like kind of escort it along here. Yeah, the game's just teaching you what an orb can do, like roll and yeah. general things <laughs> that a ball can usually do. Yeah, a little bit of speed tech here. Once it's in the little corner, you can start moving. Uh, so you want to move as quickly as possible. Uh, it's definitely very embarrassing if you move too fast and you have to redo that entire puzzle. Uh, so we, we, we try not, not to do that. But yeah, just opening up our path here. Uh, again, when we, whenever we throw the orb on one of these switches, something happens and it's just how we manipulate the world. Um, so we got to make sure that we have enough space here to get through. And yeah, we're into our first little hub area. Um, we're going to go pick up our friend, our little, uh, little robotic friend. Do you want to explain that? What, what these guys do? Well, you can like rescue these guys from I think it's like resin or something but um they they help you open doors and stuff pretty funny yeah so we're saving our little little robotic key friend here um from this resin 
We each of these has like a different puzzle associated with it. So you can see over on like the left here, uh, that's like a tower that when you turn it, it'll like spin and it'll show you the order that you're supposed to manipulate these uh, little symbols. Um, but just we have them all memorized and or they are on my cheat sheet, which is slightly off screen. Cool. So we have exited worlds and now we're going to learn how to enter worlds. Um, so this, uh, I don't even know what it's called, but it's like a little little thingy that you put your orb on and it's going to turn into a puddle and we can hop into that puddle and go back into the, uh, the red world here. And now we use the little friend, get back into that area we were in before and open a, a really big door. Yeah, this game loves some uh, really big doors. Also, it's uh, it is definitely caffeine time. So I'm from uh, I'm from the best time zone, which is Mountain Time, and uh, it is currently like midnight there. <laughs> it is 8 a.m. here in Sweden, so a uh, little little sleepy, but that's okay. We're we're gonna make it through just fine. Cool, and we have yeah, this is uh, gonna be one of our first puzzles here. We have to use these little like blobby thingies. I don't. I, I'm sure there's a technical term for it, but like you, you basically um, use these very other orbs to manipulate the environment. We have our pull cart here. We gotta pull this guy over and use him to make a bridge. Uh, a little more speed tech here. Like you gotta, you want to pull it far enough that you can get across cleanly and not have to go back down and pull it again, because that is also very embarrassing when that happens. Um, yeah, and then we're gonna be doing our first moon ancestor here. So moon ancestors in this game are just like extra little thingies that you have to go and find in the world. Um, there are 11 extra collectibles and we can go and activate them like so. And that moon ancestor, like it does a big cutscene, but we're not going to wait and watch the cutscene because that's uh, kind of boring. Um, so we're just going to keep going and moving on to the first boss. Yeah, this boss is another like little way that it introduces you to the mechanics that the that you can perform with the orbs. Yeah, so we get our bombs here. Uh, just like a good Zelda game, this boss is gonna take three hits to take down. Um, we do manipulate his flight path here by like kind of hugging the edge of the arena. And that makes it so he doesn't fly like all the way completely across. Um, that just wastes time. And then uh, here we're gonna get one more charge. And then I wanna move as far away from the boss as possible because then the bomb spawns closer to the boss and we are able to get the hit a little bit faster. These bosses are always like uh, pretty pretty anxiety inducing because if you get hit by them you lose you have to like redo the entire fight and uh, loses a bunch of time so we don't we don't want to do that. Yeah, two hits in and he's entering his final phase where you kind of just have to you know dodge these balls. Yeah, so we gotta wait. We have to wait a minimum of three cycles, uh, and then the fourth one you're able to. Uh, do your hit. Um, if you get bad RNG, you might have to wait. I think my worst is having to wait seven um, to like even be able to access the ball. Because like this pattern right here is the absolute worst one you can get. Because there's no way that you can game it. So like hopefully we get one here. Yeah. So like you see here, I'm able to kind of squeeze through there and do that final hit. Um, that saves a little bit of time. That was actually a pretty good, pretty good boss fight. Uh, there's the next big uh, speed tech there. Um, whenever we defeat a boss or there's like a long cutscene or I need to unpack orbs, which we'll explain a little bit later when that becomes relevant, uh, we can go ahead and quit to quit to our uh, our hot save right there. So the game auto saves pretty often and some of them are at really good points where we can just reload the save and immediately get back into the action without having to watch a cutscene. So uh, that saves, I want to say, like 10 minutes throughout the run. It's like a pretty absurd amount of time. Yeah, our red orb is charged now. Uh, yeah, it's going to be used to solve some puzzles here. Do you want to explain the, the red orb ability? Yeah, the, the red orb lets you walk across these uh, crystal paths that it like creates around you. And, you know, as you can see down below, there's a couple like connectors that, you know, let you access different areas and stuff. And 
you move that guy down there, uh, you know, go over to the next area. And it's going to get a little more complex than that, but that's basically the gist of the, the orange orb. Yeah, so we're going to be getting a couple of different orbs uh, here in just a here in just a minute. Uh, the game is each of them have a special unique ability, and that's how you kind of interact with the world. Um, the puzzles eventually get pretty complicated, where you have to be using multiple orbs in sequence to be able to solve some of them. Uh, but right now, again, the game starts pretty slow. We're just uh, getting introduced to the various different things that we can do. Yeah, moving on to. We're almost getting the second orb already. Yeah. Just have to, you know, get these, like, I don't know what they are, snails? Oh, they, they have a canonical name, and I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Uh, but yeah, have to get them on the, on the platforms, and then you can move on to get the, I don't know what color this orb could be. I think it's blue. Mm. Yeah, it could be blue, maybe. Looks pretty looks pretty blue to me. I promise I'm not colorblind. <laughs> yeah, so every time we uh, get a new orb, we get introduced to the boss of that orb. So you see, like, in the background here, our little uh, tentacle friend is going to be the boss of the green orb. And we're going to have to go hunt him down and then use that. Whenever you defeat a boss, that charges the orb that you fight that boss in, and then you get a new ability. So now that we have our green orb, uh, we can start working our way toward the green boss and then eventually charging up our green orb, getting more power, and then being able to solve more puzzles. Yeah, just moving back to the little portal area, we can then use both of the orbs to unlock it and keep going in the, in the green orb uh, puddle. Yeah, so the game does a really good job of like hiding things in plain sight too. Um, so it, it, it in a speed run, it's a little bit uh, hard to see just because everything is done first try. Um, there's like no uh, no like experimentation. But the first time you're playing this game, like you definitely will notice things. And you're like, how do I interact with that? Well, so we're back in the red orb here, and there's a switch. Um, before we went and got the green orb, we ha would have nothing to push it because we're we're in the red orb. Uh, but now that we can push that switch, we can come over here and get another key friend. Yeah, very epic. Got this key friend coming out. There's another uh, moon ancestor coming up, right? Uh, yeah, somewhere. <laughs> uh, for... Uh, Complete honesty, uh, this is the first uh, run I'm going to do of All Moon Ancestors. Uh, I, I definitely was not Googling in the practice room where the Moon Ancestors are. Uh, it couldn't be me. Hey man, that just means you're going to PB. Oh yeah, PB is free. That's going to be... <laughs> that is that is true. Uh, yeah, so we went and got the key friend um, because the... So if you were playing this game casually, you might come into the green orb because you're like, oh cool, we, got a, we have a new orb, let's go explore that. Uh, but you very quickly get blocked by a key gate, um, so you need to go back into the red orb and get your key friend. Uh, that's slow. We, we want to do that just first try, so we uh, come and we have our key friend right here to unlock our door for us. Cool. And yeah, uh, you did mention we have a moon ancestor coming up. Um, so you can kind of see the little like black dots um, where the moon ancestors are. It kind of tells you uh, where, to, where to look for them. Um, so we have one over here off to the left. And we have to come up and activate this platform. Um, I did go and activate that auto save before uh, coming down here. So now I can go ahead and just reload from the auto save, and it's going to teleport me back to where the like uh, main line is. Uh, so we can save a little bit of time that way. Well, so our, our key friend's going to get eaten now. Bye, key friend. He's back in the He doesn't get hurt, don't worry. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, he's just. Back in the resin, it was fine before when you broke him out of the resin, so I don't think it, it hurts him. He just goes back to sleep, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we have these. Uh, we're now learning that our key friend can get entrapped back into the resin, um, so we need to use this knowledge to manipulate some of these puzzles. 
Um, so this one here is really cool. Um, we have to drop the orb, and then you're going to be able to see the line come across through the puddle. And that, like, you see the world through... Like, you see the green world through the puddle, and you can see, like, where your line is and how to interact with it. Um, so the game does a really good job of, like, these just, like, little, little details. Yeah, and here's door number two. Oh, we get to see this door twice. Do this we? Door. Yeah, yeah. The moon answers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. I mean, this one's the fastest door, right? Because you can just walk through before the animation finishes. Cool. So this is the another moon ancestor. Uh, we get to use our red orb power here, and we have to turn this platform to go down, which is like there's like a secret uh, little bridge over here to go to this moon ancestor. Um, but it's pretty long to have to backtrack, so we want to make sure that we reload the autosave again. Because um, it's going to take us right back to the door, and it's actually faster to watch the door open twice than to backtrack all the way through the Moon Ancestor and then re-manipulate that little switch. So a uh, little bit of time here to grab that Moon Ancestor, and we're back at our friendly door here. Now we can keep going. And yeah, just manipulating some more puzzles here. We're making our way toward the green boss. Um, just a lot of little speed tech here. You just want to make sure you have like as clean the lines as possible. And like with those moving side doors, you want to make sure that you're not opening them too far because then you're wasting time letting that animation play out. Um, but yeah, so we're now using the mechanic of going exiting the green orb, placing the red orb outside of the green orb because you can't carry it through those posts. And now we... Now that the, green, the red orb is outside of there, we can basically use these portals to manipulate and get the red orb to the other side of those little barriers, and we can continue on. I was always wondering if those tentacles that are coming off of this platform are like a foreshadowing for the boss. Yeah, it has to be. Maybe the boss was holding that platform, and now that's why he's mad at us. <laughs> Move my platform. That was my favorite platform. Well, moving into our green boss here. Uh, this boss is actually like the source of a lot of frustration because it's pretty pretty random. Um, so you're gonna see these little pillars coming out of the ground here, um, as well as this uh, red blobby. I don't know what like. It's like a jetpack that you use to throw at the boss somehow. I don't know. It's weird. Game's weird. <laughs> uh, but we have to rescue that red blobby orb from the pillars, and it's random which pillar it goes into. Um, so I actually was able to see it pretty quickly here. And we have to use the boss to break them open, and then we do like a little... Uh, what's the name of that game where you're like dodging stuff? Uh, like, you mean a bullet hell? Yeah, like a bullet hell. Um, but it's like baby's first bullet hell, so it's not nothing, nothing too crazy. <laughs> that one game where you dodge stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's like a good series name for it, isn't there? Toho, you mean? Toho, yeah. The game I'm garbage at. <laughs> That's why I play Cocoon, not Toho. <laughs> hey man, you can make up for it by beating this guy. Yeah, so we're looking, 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 seeing where we can see the red. All right, we got. Oh no, okay, cool. So I wasn't wasn't fast enough there, but we're okay. Um, little bit, a little bit of speed tech there. If you move away from the boss on the third hit, uh, he, he has like a suck ability, and we don't we don't want the suck ability. It takes forever, um, so we got to make sure that we move far away, and then he just doesn't do that ability and does another charge right away. So it's like not as fast as the one phase, but you get an extra charge, not a big deal, uh, especially in a in a run that's like an hour and a half long. You you don't you don't sweat the small stuff. Lose a little bit of time here, not a big deal. So we're into phase three. Uh, bosses like to like three hits to kill, so we uh, just kind of hug the central pillar here. The pillar is our friend, and the boss can't hit us with our pillar of immunity. And then the orb always spawns in the quadrant that is opposite you. Uh, so I move into the like adjacent quadrant there to manipulate where it's going to be. Um, and then this that part of the fight is like 100% consistent. So uh, super super fast. Now we get a little bit more. I honestly think this part's easier than the first two where you have to dodge stuff, but... 
That's the final phase, and we beat them, and that's that. Yeah, very easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm a I'm a boomer, so like uh, anything that uh, requires quick reactions, I gotta I, I have to totally focus on. That. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I can't do it. Cool. Green orb charged. Uh, Want to explain green orb ability here? Yeah. Well, there's like these sort of mist pillars, or I don't know what they are. It's like fog or something, but whenever you stand inside of them and you know use the ability button that you have the uh pillars change from like non-solid to solid and every other pillar that's in the other state like changes into the other one yeah i think mist is a a good word for it um yeah so we have another we do have another moon ancestor here but i like to finish this puzzle and then come back to it uh, because you want to have the uh, the mist in a state that allows you to access it, um, and right now it, it would take longer to do that than to just do this puzzle and then come back to it. So, uh, oh, just off. Okay. Um, so yeah, first first failed puzzle. And we're, we're only 20 minutes in. That's not bad. Uh, yeah. So we have to. We're waiting for the mist to come across. Um, I try to cheat it a little bit there and go too fast. Um, but yeah, so we need to manipulate the platform so we can actually get back up onto the next little section up here. Yeah, and then get the moon ancestor, I guess. I have no idea where it is. <laughs> it's back at uh, back at 33, so oh, this right. is, uh, yeah. So we got the autosave there, go back to 33. A lot of load screens in this game. And it's down here. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the, the mist isn't in a state, like, right when you get here to do that. So, like, you'd have to go and, like, actually interact with things, which takes forever. Um, so I always like to come back and do it later. And then we reload the autosave to jump back forward to where we were. Totally yeah, planned. I mean, that's a pretty <laughs> unique kind of mechanic in the game as well with the loads. That you can just go back to certain percentage of, right? Yeah, game auto saves very, very often at the start of the game, and then not very often at the end of the game. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot, lot less. Uh, I don't. I, I like load abuse at the end of the game with the uh, with the moon ancestors. It's much easier to do in the start of the game. Yeah, but you get to do some other load stuff in the end game. Cool. Yeah. Now we get to see the first case of uh, ferrying an orb, as I like to call it. Um, so you see the red platform off to the side. Uh, we got to make sure we just need to go and swap around the orientation of our orbs um, because we need the red orb ability to get across that platform. But we also need the green orb once we're over there. So we get to go store the green orb in the red orb and then we're, we, can, we have access to it on the other side of this bridge over here. Again, just the game starting pretty slow. Uh, it's showing you the two, like two various hubs. Um, they're really, really close to each other. Eventually, the game gets a little bit more complicated, and we have to do some more for planning. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot more orb packing inside of other orbs. Cool. So yeah, we needed the green orb over on this side, so we could press this switch, get our little lift platform to come to us, and get the fly away to victory. Oh, I need a coffee break here. We're almost we're almost there. <laughs> uh, we have a key friend coming up. Um, this this puzzle, you need the red orb, and if you look closely on the ground, you're going to see a bunch of little symbols, and that would tell you the order that you have to actually press these in. Um, but we don't need that. We have notes that tell me what to do. Uh, four two. All right, sweet. Easy peasy. I think you did. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Apparently it's not that easy. It did four, three, four, I think. One, three, three, and then four, two. Four, two. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Second failed puzzle. We're keeping track. I will donate one USD for each each failed puzzle. You know what? I'll join you on that. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna fail some more then. <laughs> 
we love ma raising money for charity here, so it's all all worth it. Cool. Yeah, we uh, now have our two orbs and our key friend. Um, so the game is now going to throw us into another little area here. Um, you're gonna see like all these little like fungal growth things. Um, that we can't really interact with yet, but it's just like a precursor to what's coming up here. Yeah, this is my favorite uh, orb mechanic, honestly. I think it's a lot of people's. It's a very... It feels like it would be broken, but the game does a really good job of like reigning in your power. Um, yeah. Very difficult to like, actually break this game. Cool. So we're back to where we fought the green boss. Um, if we would have explored a little bit more after the green boss, we would see there's we're blocked by a key platform here. Um, so we already went and got the key friend, and now we're just kind of moving, moving right along in the progressing in the green orb. Yeah, almost at the next door. We love opening doors here. Cool. So this one we're going to have our key get eaten on purpose uh, again because we are going to store our key friend in a more convenient place, which is over here. Uh, and then we have to dunk our red orb into the little pipe there, and it's going to take its long journey through the marble run and eventually press a switch. And we need that switch to be pressed so we can kind of walk through these two little key trapper things um, to get our key through. And then now we have to go back and go get our red orb. Yeah, and the key friend's already, like, excited that there's a door there. He's already pointing at it. Yeah, I totally didn't know that the key friend, like, pointed to where you need to go. Uh, I, I learned that <laughs> way later than I should have <laughs> for someone that's played this game as much as I have. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool little feature. It also like plays the chime when you get things right. I did not know that. <laughs> just a lot of instances of very good game design that sometimes just go unnoticed. Yeah, this game's really fantastic at that. Oh, you see the little black uh, diamond up there too. Um, just the, another instance of the game just hiding things in plain sight. Uh, we can't interact with that yet, but we will be able to uh, in about 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what that could be. I uh, guess we'll have to find out. So just playing, playing some jump rope here, uh, using that platform to launch ourselves and our key friend over the little line thingy that wants to eat our key friend. And now he gets to go home to his uh, little pod there. And we get, oh, we get to access another world here. What color is this? Mm. Maybe like brown. Brown? Okay, I'm, I'm good with that. The brown orb. Yeah, another cutscene here. We get to see what it, what is upcoming for us. Uh, this uh, creature here is going to be our boss number three, and kind of kind of terrifying. Cool. So we have access to our purple orb now. Uh, this one is kind of unique in the fact that we go like right into it. And we're going to see the first instance of using an autosave to unpack here. So right when I enter that portal, uh, the game autosaves. And I need both my green orb and my red orb to be unstacked. Um, the autosave feature of this game puts the game into a state where like everything is consistent. Um, so I automatically have those orbs unpacked. So that auto reloading that autosave saves me time of going into the green orb, pulling the red orb out, and doing all that various shenanigans. Yeah, and we're now in the purple world for the first time. This one's a little, uh, probably the strangest one, honestly. Yeah, I've heard it described as fleshy, <laughs> which is like, that's just like one of those words that uh, makes you like slightly uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a big fan. It's like moist. <laughs> yeah, it is a very fleshy world, and we're going to be at Hitting a new mechanic here. Uh, so we had our key friend. Um, we're like only friends with robots apparently. Um, so we have another robot friend here that we have to go rescue. 
Uh, this robot friend is like a crawler. I, 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 again, there's a canonical name, but I have no idea what it is. Uh, it's he's, this crawler. He's friend. a little guy. Yeah, a little guy. He's he's carrying our orb for us. It's been been really tiring carrying the orb around by ourselves. Um, so it's it's nice to have someone to share the load. Cool. Let me send our key friend through the little fleshy tube thing here. Comes out the end, and we now have like an escort quest where our our. Uh, our little friend is walking our orb for us. We have to help him out and move him across the gap because he's a little crawler orb. He can't jump. We can't jump either, but uh, he definitely can't jump. He's also kind of slow, kind of dumb. The AI pathing is uh, not great, um, but I do try to, a <coughs> little bit of speed tech is you try to move as far away from it as possible because it has like a catch-up feature. Like, so to get it to go to max speed, um, the further, like, if you're a good distance away, it'll run faster than if you're cl uh, close to it. Because um, it does, like, slow down when it gets close to you, to, so you can have a little bit more fine-tuned movement. Yeah, and he opened the elevator up for us. Now we can move on to the next part of the purple area. It's a get to fly away in our ship. Yeah, purple area has like a couple of these little cutscene-y uh, sections where you have, have some time to kind of kick back. One of like the best parts about this run is you get to get to chill and drink coffee. Yeah, and then another just I like I like pointing out speed tech when it when it happens. Um, you want to have the red orb on the left side there, which is a little counterintuitive because it flies over the right side. For some reason, when they have to cross paths, uh, you save like five seconds, as opposed to it just taking a direct line. I don't know why that is. It just happens. Um, unless I just don't know how to time, which, eh, that, that could also be true. <laughs> I'll just take your word for it. See, but then if everybody does that, we will never know. <laughs> but that just means that everybody's going to have the same times on that. Nobody's going to have a, an unfair advantage. Yeah, it's fun when I make people do things wrong, because I just like was too lazy to time things. Cool, so we have another little friend here. Uh, this one is going to help us get our next Moon Ancestor. Uh, we're getting to the point where the autosaves are like kind of far apart, um, so we don't we don't have any like autosave tech or anything cool like that for this one. Um, you just have to come down here and do a little bit of a puzzle. And our friend just takes forever to run here. So, uh, yeah, if you have any messages or anything you want to read, like. Um, no, not right now, but that'll be a yeah. wonderful time to plug it. Yeah, you know, we've got a wonderful organization here. So if you do have any donations, now would be a wonderful time to, to get those in while we have some downtime. Yeah, we need to need to raise some more money. It's like 8 a.m. here. It's time. It's money money raising yeah, time. It's, it's it's definitely hard to get in, get in going in the morning. It's uh, <laughs> very early in a lot of places. Uh, yeah, well, our, uh, our charity, Make-A-Wish Foundation, fantastic. Please, please give them money. Yeah, I, I'm going to jump on the train as well. I'll do $10 for every failed puzzle with y'all as well. Oh. So we got $12 per failed puzzle, so surely he won't be failing them on purpose. Oh, I would never do that. I would never throw never, for charity. Never, never, never. We never throw for charity. <laughs> cool. So we have uh, our little friend here, and we can manipulate him to like be on these switches for us. Um, he'll, he'll just stop moving when there's no orb. Um, so we... Use him to press switches so we can like get across new, uh, new little gaps and things like that. And then our red orb still has its power while it's on our little friend here. So our friend is going to escort us across the, the gap here. Um, but he's very slow, so it, uh, you just have to take your time. You can fall off of that, and that's uh, always embarrassing when that happens. Yeah. Cool. So we rescued our red orb. Uh, now we need to go get our green orb back because it was taken rudely, rudely away from us. It was just like flying friends that were escorting it. They didn't, they didn't take it away. They were hold, they were holding it for us yeah. for later. Yeah, like, that, that makes that makes sense. Uh, this puzzle is actually one that behaves differently depending on the refresh rate of your monitor. So I have to do a strategy that I like don't know because <laughs> uh, my monitor is like a ridiculous refresh rate, and everybody's like, "Why can you do this?" And I can't. I'm like, "Well, I don't know." <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the, I'm just assuming that the ESA monitors uh, don't have a high refresh rate, which they probably do. The tech here is fantastic. So shout outs to ESA for making everything as smooth as possible for us runners. Yeah. 
if you have anything above like 144, or I think 144 hertz on your monitor already works for that puzzle, you can like, the orb accelerates slightly slower, I guess, and you can like beat it to the platform and get it up earlier than you're supposed to. Yeah, it does something. Uh, Zet did a bunch of science on that, and I don't know, I, I trust, his, uh, trust his math. Oh, we're into, I like to call this the jellyfish ship. Uh, it looks kind of like a jellyfish, maybe? I don't know, with propellers? Because, I don't know, are we in water? Uh, very confusing. This little platform at the bottom there gives you a boost somehow by by just splitting the jellyfish up. I don't know how it works. Maybe it's like one of those like uh, like sticky hand toys. Oh yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I had a visual aid for that. That would have been perfect. That would have required planning ahead of time. I, d I know exactly what you're talking about. Though. I could see that so vividly while you're holding it there. It's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, the Americans up here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's funny we ended up together. Yeah, you were talking about the time zone thing earlier, and I'm like, I'm Pacific Coast, and yeah, it's oh, it's, yeah. yeah, it's wild. That's worse time zone. <laughs> I don't Not. have any opinions on that. Well, yeah, this is where the game actually starts getting a little bit more complicated. Um, so we need our red orb, so we park our red orb in s outside of the purple orb, and then we have to use our green orb to manipulate our mist over here. Um, if we didn't do that, we would quickly find that we need our red orb over here. Um, so we can't just like leave it parked over there. And now we just need to do a big switcheroo where we switch all of our orbs around. Uh, we need to park our red orb inside. We need to park our green orb inside of our red orb so we can use the red orb power to cross the little bridge. Um, and then we need our green orb on the other side. So just a little bit of a little bit of planning is needed here. Um, the hardest part about speedrunning this game is like remembering all of these different puzzles. Uh, so. We did it. Hey, we went across the little bridge. And now we have to go rescue another key friend. All right, how many times can I mess up this code to raise our amount donated to charity? <laughs> One, four, five, three, two. All right. Very easy. One, four, five, three, two. All right, we did it. Nice. They do teach us to count in the States. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I'm, I'm a teacher, so I get to rag on the U.S. education system. <laughs> cool. So we have our, uh, our key friend here. Um, and this is going to be a case uh, where, like, the keep it simple, stupid uh, mentality comes in. Uh, this puzzle, you have to come in here. You, have, you want your key friend to get eaten because um, it's going to store that key friend in the green orb now. Um, so key friend inside the green orb, uh, and we uh, now he's not following us. So we have one of those little key eater platforms right there, um, which is not active because we don't have our key friend. Our key friend is chilling inside the green orb. And then we just like kind of run back and forth, uh, ferry both of these orbs across, and go rescue our key friend out of the other side. Um, so we, we get him to skip the skip the key eater portion, and now we have him where we need him. Um, this is like one of the first time saves that we found, um, which is just to like, it's, it's faster to walk back and forth to go grab both of our orbs and bring them to the other side than it is to like pack them inside of each other because that is just kind of time consuming. But now our key friend is going to go into his home and we're going to be moving our way toward the purple boss at another big door. See, there's like a fleshy key home over here too. It's a little, little weird. Yeah, it's like imitating the technology or something in like a, a lot of spots in this sub world. It's really interesting. Yeah, there's like two different versions. You have like the techie version and then like the fleshy clone version. Cool. So this is our big purple door. Or brown door. Did we say brown? Is the color of this orb? Yeah, it's uh, it's brown, I guess. Just call it brown. Well, this is my uh, 
my favorite troll of the Cocoon community. Um, every run that I do, I always like to pretend that pushing these guys makes them go faster. It doesn't, but it's funny. It's always funny watching other people do it. Oh, look, he's <laughs> going faster. Oh, yeah. Going super fast. Um, for some reason, the right side moves like 0.2 seconds faster than the, red, than the left side, so we do the right one first. He's on his little platform here. Confirmed right side is faster. Right side, best side. Launch our uh, two little friends over to the other side so they can press a button for us. And now we have another moon ancestor coming up. So our, uh, we're ditching our, ditching our friends. We're coming, on, coming over here to release this moon ancestor. Another one where I didn't know that was there. Even though that one's like one of the most obvious ones, probably. Yeah, just like slightly off screen. <laughs> But at this point, you're like, oh, I can follow my friends. They're showing me the way. Yeah. No. You got to ditch him. Go unlock the moon ancestor. That's messed up. All right. We're on to the third boss. And it teaches you another little mechanic that you can use for this boss, which is uh, this other guy on the other side of the arena. I don't know who that is, but... You can like switch with them. Yeah, this boss is like I don't know, one of the more annoying ones. Uh, you can get like the first three patterns are pretty pretty safe, uh, where we just kind of do our best to manipulate where the missile is going to spawn. Um, you can like it is fully manipulable. Uh, like every action you take, like if you can take the exact same action, you would get the exact same pattern. Um, but unfortunately not a robot, so doing that is like impossible. Um, so we just do our best to kind of uh, figure out where it's going to be and try to act really quick to get to the missile. And then we manipulate the boss to stomp the platforms he's already on so he doesn't have to like have any travel time. Um, so like right here, you're gonna see he's, he's starting the pattern on the left side because I'm on the right side. Um, so just a little bit, of, uh, little bit of time save right there of the boss not flying across the arena. Cool, that one's fast. All right, this boss needs more than three hits because the game just decides to switch things up, which is fun. I made the boss fly across the arena there because uh, I just forgot what I was doing. <laughs> it happens. And now we get uh, some more more fleshy stuff, this uh, like brain-looking stuff. It makes you run slow. So a little bit of a little bit of change to the fight here. Uh, this specific phase you can lose just like an absolute ton of time on. Uh, if you get the fast pattern, which is like a missile spawning when you're down to these four platforms, uh, you save like, I want to say in the realm of like 20 seconds. So we hope we get lucky. Um, oh, it spawned right under the boss. <laughs> so a little, little bit unlucky. Um, but yeah, we, now we have to do our time loss of shame. All right, last phase. Would we consider that a failed puzzle, though? No, no, that's not a failed puzzle. That's a bad RNG moment. As someone that speedruns RPGs, I get to blame RNG a lot. Cool. And then last phase, uh, our boss is going to get a shield. Um, he finally decided to bust out the shield at the very end uh, instead of just using it the whole time, which, I don't know, that's like pretty pretty common with uh, with boss fights. They like to do that. And we just wait for the shield to drop, hit the final missile, and now our purple orb is charged. Now we get to see what the charge of the purple orb does, because I know it's down there and it just disappeared. I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. <laughs> How'd you do that? So the purple orb is all of these little blobby things at the same time. <laughs> It's like Schrodinger's purple orb, where you can pull it out of these, and that's like how you are going to be manipulating all of these puzzles. Yeah, using the grabbing the blob to because we have those little pillars that block our path. Um, yeah, and we're moving into one of my favorite sections of the run, the Blorbo section. Yeah, if you're wondering who Blorbo is. It's that guy up there. He's our friend. Yeah, he's coming down to meet us. Yeah, 
Yeah, usually you're only allowed to move him on those, like, purple pads. But, uh, you'll, you'll see later that those pads are just kind of a suggestion. Yeah, the, the game is very, very well built, and there's not a lot of glitches, uh, but we do have, do have one coming up, uh, and it's one of my favorites. Like, this section is so cool, and very difficult to do fast. Yeah, it's super fun. I didn't know you could go through there. Yeah, that's when I learned uh, also more recently than I should have. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is our Blurbo friend for this section, and this Blurbo really just wants to be free. So we're gonna we're gonna try to help him be free. Yeah, if you put him on the seam between those two, uh, well, the top and the bottom, and like the corner. And then you move straight to the left, there we go. You can get him out of there, and he'll come right to you. Yeah, we freed our Blurbo, uh, but then he has to go back. Sorry, Blurbo. We need you for the next section of the puzzle. He'll be fine. Yeah, so that the alternative is walking him like all the way around and doing a whole long puzzle section, so... Uh, that's slow, we're not doing that. We're just gonna free our Blurbo friend, and then let this guy eat our orb real quick. He just wanted an orb snack, and then we yoinked it from him. Feels kind of mean to do, but he he stole our orb, so I guess yeah. it's retribution. This is a speedrun. There's no feelings in speedruns. Only speed. Gotta go fast. All right, we have another Blorbo here. This is our this is our last Blorbo. Uh, so we we have to say bye to our friend after this puzzle. But this Blurbo also wants to be free, and this this free Blurbo is like very uh, very inconsistent. So let's we'll see if we get it. So this one is not like on a seam; it's like on just a section that there's, I don't know, like weird collision, and we're just trying to get it to clip out. So uh, sometimes you get it first try, sometimes you get it third try. Question mark? Hey, yeah, third try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any like I think third try is where you start losing time. So. Uh, that was still still worth it, and it's cool. Yeah, fun fun to free Blurbo. You have him eaten there, and then you move him away from the platform where that guy, you know, is chilling. Because if you if you leave him on top of that platform, he just continuously gets eaten, and you can't progress. Cool. So we are basically done with that section of the purple orb, and we're moving into. Uh, kind of one of the bigger like meta moments of the run uh, where we are going to be like doing our first big long unpacking section uh, unfortunately there's no convenient auto save for this one so we get to just kind of uh, kind of wait for me to take all of the orbs out of the purple orb and put them onto this little I don't know like elevator UFO platform thingy uh, game's weird has a lot of weird stuff in it yeah it's just kind of lets you move if you have orbs so if you if you ever take a vacation to this place just bring a bunch of orbs with you yeah that's the play i think someone uh called this a roomba at one point i guess it kind of looks like a roomba it does kind of look like a roomba Gonna go vacuum up some orbs. So we're basically like a cat riding a Roomba right now. Is that, is that what this is? Our flying saw blade Roomba. another long cutscene section um, and this one is like kind of confusing too because it like always takes a different amount of time <laughs> for some reason like you're always like plus or minus like a like a full second on it even though you did everything absolutely the same uh, but yeah now we have a bunch of we have three single color puzzles um, and this is where like the game is kind of showing you 
just the extent of what each individual color can do. Um, so like our red orb, we've always known we have these platforms. We've always known we've had our little robo friend, um, but now we're going to be manipulating them in a completely new way. But first, there's a moon ancestor. So this moon ancestor is hidden just uh, south of our actual puzzle that we're going to be doing um, through this little pipe thingy here. We're going to go rescue our, our moon ancestor here. Little switch we gotta press. Almost forgot how to how to get that bridge up. I was like, do I need the other thing? <laughs> yeah, we get to see a little bit more of that cutscene. So now the the auto saves are getting far enough apart that it just makes more sense to backtrack the puzzles. Yeah, it's not that far anyway. Yeah, that one's not too bad. So now we have a little friend. Um, but we need our red orb power to cross the bridge, and we need our little friend to be on the button that is underneath the puzzle. Uh, so this one took a little bit of thought. I know my first casual playthrough of this game, um, where we need to have our little friend lead us across the first half of the bridge, and then we just say bye. He falls off, and now we activate the switch. But don't worry, he's fine. We'll get him back. And we do still need him to finish off this puzzle. Uh, each of these three individual color sections have a little friend, and in order to complete them, you have to escort your little friend up into this uh, little, like, I don't know, what, like a shade blobby thingy? I don't know. Hard to explain, uh, but it's like a like a hang glider shade bobby, blobby thing, where we're going to be hanging from it and chilling. Cool. And now this friend is going to fly us back to our other orbs. But at the same time, it's going to steal our red orb. Yeah. Well, I guess it's like a payment for the ride. Yeah, it's the most expensive Uber. It uh, takes an entire world from you. Oh, now onto the green puzzle. <coughs> This one again, green orb power, manipulating mist. Um, but we need this platform right here on my left. We need that one to be in the down position. And in order to do that, we actually have to do a pretty, a pretty long puzzle to get it into the down position with our little friend. So we come up here, do a little more marble runny stuff, where we uh, have our green orb then transported to the other side of these. Uh, these little pillars that block your movement. We're going to be rescuing our friend here. Who is stuck it over here. And now we need to get him on the other side of those. He also can't walk through those. So we're going to have to use the power of the button to launch him over to the other side. You're welcome, friend. It sounded like he enjoyed it. Now into the little escort section. Uh, so unlike the red orb, where if the little friend is holding it, like you still get the power of it, uh, the little friend can't use the green orb. So we have to take it back from them and just be picking it up and constantly just shuffling around. So I need to have the have the friend on that switch. So now the uh, mist is in the correct orientation on the left hand side, and we're going to be using that to raise up our little friend to the platform where it's going to get our green orb is going to get stolen from us by the same like a uh, shady bat thingy. Yeah, two out of three. And I'm moving on to the purple one. Does it matter in which uh, order you do these three? Or? No, not at all. It's, it's the same order. Um, usually I do green first because uh, green's a cool color. And <laughs> yeah. But I thought it was blue. Oh, yeah, blue blue's a cool color. And then the red orb, uh, the red orb has the moon ancestor. So just to make sure that I don't <laughs> forget where the moon ancestor is, I did that one yeah. first. Cool. Moving on to the last section here, uh, we have our purple orb. So we get our little blobby thingy over here to get our purple orb on the other side of those blocks. Using it to press the switch, and then we have our little friend for the purple orb. 
this is another puzzle that just like took me way longer than it probably should have. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be using... We need to park our little friend right here where I'm standing. And then we're going to be dunking the orb onto him. So he starts moving at a like specific time. Um, because if I just put him on the switch, that wouldn't work. Because I need to be able to like have him move off of the switch. So we do this. And we're going to put the orb onto our little friend. And then when he's on the switch, pick up an orb. And that stop causes that orb to disappear. And it stops him. So we can then move through those gates and finish off this puzzle. Yeah, getting our last hand glider here. and uh, I don't know what could possibly happen once we have all three of these because we're already, you know, outside of the orb. I wonder what that could possibly unlock. Yeah, we're like in an overworld right now. Uh, this has just been our overworld for the entire time. Alright, so there's all three of our orbs stolen. Um, they're just kind of floating here. They're just chilling. Oh, a new switch. What could be underneath that? What could be outside the overworld? Well, where could that take us? Oh no, there's another orb. <laughs> the overworld was an orb the entire time. The gray orb? Yeah, gray, gray's fine. I can live with gray. It's a shade of gray. Well, and introduced to the last boss here. I guess not the last boss. The last uh, orb-based boss. But yeah, we are now outside. I, I, I think this is the sun? Is like what it's supposed to be? I mean, pretty walkable sun. Yeah. It is the sun. I mean, spoiler alert, these, uh, these orbs are like planets, so this is like the, the start of the solar system. We're all the way on the outside now. Uh, three, two, four, one, five. We have another, another key friend here. Cool. And then we have to put the orb on the switch here to unlock this little amber switch here uh, so we can get our key friend uh, fully unlocked. Um, you see on that uh, like big, big other orb on the bottom part of the screen, that's like this puzzle is, it, uh, there's five of those different ones and you have to kind of look at the order that they're in to see uh, how to unlock that key friend. Yeah, the cool thing about those uh, number order puzzles is that you can read them left to right and right to left, and both of those combinations end up uh, working to solve the puzzle. Yeah, but I think one of them is also like cyclical, so you can like do it in any order as yeah. long as it's. I'm pretty sure that one is the cyclical. Oh yeah. Where it's like you can start it at any point, and I don't know. You just, uh, I just picked one. <laughs> cool. did, um, you, did you optimize it? Is it the fastest possible one to perform? Sure. <laughs> uh, I, uh, we, we actually had a discussion on, like, one of them. Like, because th there's really only one that's, like, questionable as to what's faster. And I uh, did a very scientific method of, like, overlaying rulers on, like, a screenshot of the game. It's like, yeah, look, this is a shorter distance. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how you route games, right? <laughs> yeah, that's one way to do it, at least. Playing Warhammer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get our get our stretchy tape out and like. <laughs> All right, so we're moving into our fourth boss here. Uh, this is 
the we're gonna be loading into the base of this uh, object here so we're, we're seeing it rotate around this is all very dramatic so yeah we're loading into the base here and it's gonna it's gonna shoot us out of the tip into this uh, fleshy arena do of that what you may <laughs> but yeah we're gonna fight our boss here uh, this one takes four hits because he has four legs so that's how math works Uh, we, so. have, we have to free four key friend does though. I don't know where all these key friends were when we actually needed them, uh, but they're here now. They're in this boss fight. Uh, they're going to help us out here. So this boss takes four key friends to unlock. Oh, did we actually get like four key friends throughout the run? Like that would be really cool. If I that think, was a small detail. I think we did. Yeah. So maybe. I mean, did we? These are the friends we made along the way. Cool. So yeah, this boss uh, is kind of mean, and also has a pretty cool bug with it that I hope I don't get to see. <laughs> uh, I don't know if like the latest patch like bricked the boss, but uh, hopefully we don't see the bug because <laughs> it wastes a whole bunch of time. But we need to need the boss to stomp these little amber pads, and it encases the foot into the amber, and then we use that to break the leg. Uh, we're just gonna be uh, like a like the the mean kid on the playground that uh, messed with bugs. And we're going to be ripping off his legs one by one because we're mean like that for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it either. At least we're not using like a magnifying glass to burn ants. That would be mean too. Yeah. Yeah, leg th third leg. Uh oh, okay. Didn't want to stomp it. Yeah. You got to wait for the stomp animation to start and I was too impatient there. Oh good, didn't waste too much time there. Uh, two legs, uh, he's going to be starting to do some uh, some more slamming where we have these like waves coming out. Um, these waves are pretty jank and kind of annoying. And I think that's like, I'm pretty sure that was the theory behind how the bug happens. Uh, but the boss can kind of like snap to your location <laughs> when it's not supposed to. And instead of just like actually stomping. So uh, I'm trying to play it a little bit safe here because this boss takes like five minutes if you fail it. This guy's weird in general, like, why is he faster on two legs than four? I don't know, just speeds up. And then on the one leg here, this is actually my favorite phase, because he does that little, like, butt wiggle yeah. when he does the stomp, and it just reminds me of my cats when they do their jump. They, they do a little butt wiggle, make sure they have good balance. Very cute. We're just waiting for the little uh, amber platform to pop up here. There it is. All the way on the other side of the arena. There is like a manipulation for this boss fight that's like pretty consistent, but uh, it takes time to learn and I just didn't feel like doing it. So we just uh, go a little slower here. Cool, that's the white boss. Now we get the power of the white orb. Or gray, I Our think it was. Our morally gray orb. Yeah, so if you remember that diamond we saw like 30 minutes ago, well, we can now interact with them. So yeah, these are going to be switches that we have to interact with uh, using our white orb shooty power thingy. Which I'm pretty sure is the canonical term for it. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, and you can like buffer all of these inputs, so like you need to charge it up using the one and only interact button. Uh, but you can buffer them as you're like stepping onto the platform to make sure that you're interacting with it as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, sometimes it just like is weird and it does decides not to work. I don't know why. Uh, but like you can definitely miss that shot there, even though like you only have like the eight directions of possible ways you could shoot. I don't know. It's weird. It game behaves strangely at times, but thankfully that one it didn't do that. Because that's always embarrassing when you're like, oh, I, I did it. And I'm going to start moving to the next objective. Nope, you didn't do it. Yeah. That puzzle also teaches you to, like, you know, buffer the shots because they do take a while to get to where they're going. So you can, like, move onto platforms before they hit the diamond. So you can, like, move on to other areas and stuff. But, yeah, why... 
Why is this guy stealing our orb? Oh, this is Sun Mommy. She's a canonical uh, term. <laughs> Sun Mommy just stole all of our orbs. She she's taken our toys away. We've been we've been bad. Didn't even do anything. We just like. Okay, we kind of ripped out that guy's legs one by one, so that was kind of mean, but. Yeah, that's our revenge for that. Cool. We get, uh, now we have access to these little shooty platforms, so we get to use our white orb power uh, to shoot from this platform. Uh, we throw one of the shots inside of the mirrors, and we're using the, the mirrors to manipulate the shot so it'll, it's going to hit this platform when I'm on it and raise us up. And we're going to be fighting our first phase of Sun Mommy here in just one minute. You want to explain how these sections work? Uh, yeah, well... First, you kind of restart there to get to the, the spot down there faster. Um, but yeah, you, you get lifted up by this, like, I don't know what it is, like, aura or whatever. And then you have to shoot these moving crystals, which is a lot harder than it looks. There's also a couple, like, uh, things blocking you from shooting the crystals. And if you, if you take too long, you just kind of get drop back down you have to repeat the entire thing but Sony did it and we now get the opportunity to shoot our sun mommy in the face with like a big laser yeah she didn't even defend that one he wasn't ready she's mad at us now but it's gonna give us an orb back like fine you can you can get one Cool, so you see like the little green mist here. Uh, we get the green orb back, hooray. Thanks for the orb back. And then we get to blast off to our next location. Cool, and then this is where our puzzles now start getting a little bit more complicated. Uh, so we're going to learn here that you can interact with these orbs from the exterior. So I have my green orb right here, and I'm going to be shooting lasers into my green orb, and depending on the orientation that they're in, uh, on the outside is the orientation that they're going to be flying into the green orb. Yeah. So we place it on the right side there. They're flying now in the leftward direction from the thing and hitting the switch, which was there 30 minutes ago, and we're just only now able to interact with it. Yeah, and we have to switch around the orientation of the white orb outside to like hit switches on the other sides. Yeah, the game. This is this part is like a little handholdy. It's like, oh, you figured it out once. Well, here, do it three more times just to prove that you got the concept. Yeah, and also you're forced to miss the cycle of this thing moving over because we decided that that's just how it is, yeah, except for this one. The game decides to be like mildly irritating. Uh, we do have another Moon Ancestor here. Um, I actually don't know like how you figure out the code for this one, <laughs> uh, but it, I'm pretty sure it's just up, down, left, right. So we shoot these up, down, left, right. Oh, it's tonal. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, you were watching us figure out how this game works live. <laughs> Cool. Free that Moon Ancestor. Uh, there is also like a secret ending to this game that I won't spoil at all because uh, it's like a pretty pretty in-depth puzzle and I don't even begin to understand it. Uh, but if you're into like really deep meta puzzles, it's a fantastic type of game for that. Cool. And now we have a platform where we can manipulate the direction that our shots are going to be coming into the green orb. So we have this platform and we can move it. So our shots are now coming in from the north and going toward the south. So it's going to be hitting that switch and we're going to be moving this platform. This is like the big key to like the rest of the puzzles in the run. Like we're going to be just moving that platform to find the correct orientation to be able to hit that so we can use it to move the mist. So like here, we're going to need to be shooting it from the right side. So I need to go back into the green orb. 
Now we're going to move it over to the right side. In order to complete this next puzzle. Uh, this reload actually saves like a whole bunch of time. There's like a whole southern section of this little platform that you're supposed to be doing like some puzzles on. Uh, but if we just activate this switch here and then go ahead and reload, we have access to our two orbs that are already in the correct position. So we can just go and start fighting the boss right away. Yeah, getting into the second phase of Sun Mommy here. Which is a lot more consistent because the, the orbs don't like move the entire time, they just move when you shoot. All right. Nice. See, now Mommy is uh, deciding she wants to play tennis with us. Uh, this, I think that this boss is like what's called Ganondorf by the community, because you can obviously see some inspiration here, where we're using our Master Sword to bounce the glowy orbs back at Ganondorf. Surely you mean bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is speedrunning. <laughs> cool, and now, so that's the second phase of Sun Mommy, and we're going to be getting access to our red orb again. And this is where the game kind of gets a little bit, a little bit more trippy. Yeah, this section is. It, it confused me for a for a long time when I played this casually. Thanks for the red orb back. All right, so this section, uh, you see we have like one of those lift platforms in the top right, uh, but we can't actually do anything with it yet um, because we need to, like if I were to put an orb on that platform and move it, I now don't have access to that orb. Uh, so the game is going to introduce something here in just one minute uh, that you'll see we can start interacting with these various situations um, that are going to come up this and in the final puzzle. We have to use our white orb there. Again, that switch has been there the entire game. Uh, we're back in the red orb, which was like an hour ago. <laughs> uh, and we are now finally able to move on to the final section of it. Yeah. But first, we have a moon ancestor. Gotta go, gotta go do our chores and collect all the thingies. Because y'all donated for it. Again, thank you. Thank you for donating for it. I'm excited. I get the PB. Cool. You better submit this run. Oh, I'm going to. If this uh, if this is like a good time, we'll see. Cool. So we are moving into what is again like it's a kind of a trippy point in the in the run where we have to use our orbs to unlock another big door. Um, but we already fought all the bosses. So like, what could this big door possibly unlock? But so, we'll have to find out. Yeah, it's a weird little door here, um, and we have to use both of our orbs to unlock it. A um, little bit, of, again, just more speed tech. You want to put the white orb on the left-hand side because you're going to be needing it over on that side. And this thing is going to unlock, and it's a portal. Very strange, strange portal. That kind of looks familiar up there. Hmm, oh, strange. Yeah, putting this uh, orb onto the little lift thing here and shooting it off to the other side uh, for some reason. I don't, know, I don't know why. We'll find out. Yeah, we just did that because it's fun. It is fun. And now we are back to where we fought the white boss. <laughs> so we are able to walk from the red orb into the white orb. So previously we haven't been able to do that at all. Um, and now we have are able to come out of the white orb through the red orb. Um, so we are just like in a different dimension of puzzle now. It's fantastic. Yeah, this is this is where it gets really confusing. All right, cool. So we have a little bit of just uh, ferrying here that we have to 
make sure we have our orbs in the correct orientation. So uh, if you have any messages, go ahead and read them out. Absolutely. Uh, we have $10 from our own Nico Hart, who says, uh, this has been such a fantastic run to watch. Cocoon is such a gorgeous game. And I'd agree with you more there. Thank you, Sonny, for giving us such a great run to kickstart our Mondays. Much love, Nico Hart. Thank Aww. you so much, Nico Hart. And Nico. <laughs> he is, of course, putting that towards that open Tyco incentive uh, later in the week. Thanks, Nico. Appreciate you, bud. Did I hit the switch? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll see if this is another really failed puzzle. Attention. Nico has broken us. <laughs> All right, we're, we're about to find out if we have another failed puzzle to donate some more money to charity. Yeah, keeping all of these things straight in your head is like is pretty difficult. Uh, so we'll, let's find out. All right, we did not hit the switch. Okay. Bad RNG, failed puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so I was supposed to send the platform over to the other side, but we get to go through the little universe door thingy here again. Uh, we get to see more, see some more content. That's three now, yeah. Yeah, three. Yeah, That's three. not bad. That's the, I mean. Over an hour and a half run, three three small RNG fails is not bad. <laughs> yeah, no, that was actually intentional to set up the next uh, next boss RNG. Pretty sure that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, manipulating the seed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what it, what we s should have saw is uh, me using that oid orb to then transport myself across this chasm, uh, and we now get to open up a little platform here, and then use our white orb to open up this next hub. Um, again, this is where the, the autosaves are like getting really, really far apart. Um, so there's not as much um, autosave like shenanigans to like let us ferry these over. And the game does check um, that you have like all of the orbs with you uh, in order to trigger the autosaves. So there's going to be a couple of instances of me having to like pack them back into each other um, in order to be able to in order to trigger the autosave the, to then have to use the autosave to unpack them. It, it gets confusing. <laughs> Cool, so we have our green orb. I need to move the green orb. We have to move this switch again, because if you saw on that previous screen, uh, the white shooty thingy is up top. So we need to use, we need to move the platform so it's oriented north-south, and it's gonna shoot into the green orb and allow us to use the mist without actually using the green orb. And then we have a red platform up top that we need to go do to press the switch to unlock the next area. Yeah, it's unlucky that you can just barely not make that cycle to get up the green platform thing earlier. Yeah, there there is a faster way to do that that I just like completely spaced, uh, <laughs> um, where you you put the white orb on the switch first and it gives you a better cycle. Oh, but yeah. it, it's like two seconds tops. <laughs> and uh, with a run this long and so many puzzles, you can't remember everything. Yeah. Cool. So we need to pack all of the orbs into our red orb because our next section is another one of those little glowy bridges. And there is a check on the other side of the bridge to make sure that you have all three orbs um, in order to trigger the autosave. You need them all anyway. So uh, the casual way of doing this would be just to pack them in and then unpack them to do the next puzzle. But we want to get all of them outside very, very quickly. So we just do this. And now they are in a position where we can just go ahead and interact with them really easily. I need to go press the switch inside of the green. And then when I put the, I need to put the green orb inside the red orb on the right hand side, uh, because we're going to be shooting it from the left. It <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I doing this casually was just a whole lot of trial and error, uh, trying to make sure that you have the correct orientation for like, cause you, now we're going, we're shooting the red orb with the white orb that's going to then fly out of the red orb into the green orb and hit a switch so we can do the mist. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not confusing at all. No, very, very simple. <laughs> I figure this out first try for sure. Cool. And again, we need to take our white orb, put it back in the red orb, and then that'll allow us to trigger the next autosave. Cool. 
Uh, this puzzle, we were just two levels deep there where we were shooting red into green. Uh, and now we need to go, we need to go deeper. Uh, this puzzle will have us going from white into red into green. Uh, but I need to make sure the orientation, so the green orb is going to be the deepest orb, like the deepest level orb, uh, but we need to make sure it has the correct orientation at the very start uh, it, so this all works out. And if you're doing this casually and you're just doing it like trial, trial and error, uh, you have to re-unpack that green orb from inside the red orb inside the white orb. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a pit. So this is one of the puzzles where it really helps to be a speedrunner and have it all done ahead of time. And also one of the more embarrassing things to fuck to mess up. So we want to <laughs> we want to make sure that we don't do that cuz this puzzle takes forever to redo. Yeah. I've I've messed this up like twice I think even though I've only really done one full run of this. I don't know how I managed to do that, but yeah. And now we just sit here and wait and it's just like terrible because <laughs> if you screwed it up you uh then have to do the walk of shame all the way back to the other side and redo the puzzle so like you shot that orb out there and then it went back into the ball and then like into yeah. another ball oh my lord okay and we're gonna do it again this time with a shot that's bouncing off of mirrors uh this one's really satisfying to do like your first time because you hit it while it's in the air and then now that shot is traveling through those orbs and you go into the mist, and you get up to the supper platform here. Cool. We're about to hit Sun Mommy Phase 3, uh, but we need to get our green orb out. And our green orb is two levels deep, which is kind of a pain. So we, there's no autosave here. We have to like manually come and unpack these orbs. Uh, my, my least favorite part about traveling, unpacking. So this is just making me relive those moments. But we do have a neat little time save here where we can just, uh, so instead of like leaving our white orb on the outside, we just uh, park our white orb here because we don't need it. So it gets to sit inside the red orb until we unpack it. Yeah, it gets unpacked here through the, through the load. And then, you know, we do the next phase here. This one like kind of combines the first two phases by having the the walls move when you shoot, but the the orbs themselves move on their own. And they have this last bit where the orbs keep getting further away. Oh, perfect! Very right. nice. One out of three ain't bad, right? <laughs> Do the other two count as failed puzzles? No, no, that's not a failed puzzle. Again, I'm a teacher. I'm not made of money. <laughs> so yeah, just playing some more tennis here. Very fun. Very interactive. She's getting a lot better at tennis, but we're, we're better. So now we get our final orb rescued from Sun Mommy. And we'll be heading on to kind of our final section of the run. Thanks for the purple orb back. I appreciate it. I don't know why you stole it in the first place. Yeah. Should have known this was going to happen. Another long cutscene moment. Sun Mommy is defeated. Again, took three hits. Definitely not a Zelda reference at all. What could we possibly do now that Fun Mommy is gone and we have all the orbs back? We will find out. A uh, cool little thing is like these, uh, when they go into the little like uh, storage area, I guess, uh, you can see what color they are by, like, there's, like, a little indicator. Um, so it's just a neat little thing that the game does to kind of keep that continuity going. A lot of really, really smart game design in this game. I, I do enjoy it a lot. Yeah, it's it's very beautifully designed. 
useful. So we have a, a ship here that we need all of our orbs for. Um, so we don't get to really play with the purple orb anymore, which is kind of disappointing. Like it's, it's really the best orb uh, because our final puzzle takes place inside of the purple one. But we get to get ferried over to the other side. And a little bit, little bit more puzzling we got to do here. And yeah, this is the last section of the game. So intentionally, you put the right, the white orb on the right hand side of that, um, so that it's up here when you need to come out. A little bit, little bit of speed tech there. Uh, Got to make sure that things are in the position that we want them in, so everything is pre-planned. And then just bury both of the orbs over using the white orb. Sadly, we can't get the white orb over there. Open up a little hub thingy so we can actually interact with our orbs. I've got to pop back over to the hosting desk. Best of luck with the rest of run. It's been an absolutely gorgeous game. Oh yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, now we have our two orbs over here, and we're able to activate the second universe gate. Um, so this one is, it behaves a little bit differently than the last one. So the last one was fairly linear. Uh, we were able to just basically walk from the red orb into the white orb. Um, now this one, uh, this one is taking place inside of the green orb. Um, so we... So now we have access to the green orb and we have a portal to the green orb. That's not gonna cause anything weird, you think, right? I don't know how it would. I mean, you have the green orb right here. How are you gonna be inside of the green orb when you have the green orb in your hand? So yeah, we're carrying the green orb into the green orb, uh, which is a little bit of a paradox, and it's going to allow us to kind of break the game in an intended way. Yeah, green orb inside of the red orb, and now we go out of the green orb inside of the red orb, grab the green orb, exit the red orb, and now we have the green orb in the green orb. Yeah, we have like a, have like a fake green orb here. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can kind of see the green orb in the green orb right next to the red orb there. Yeah, this moment in the game is like... Very mind blowing. Um, I really appreciate it, like as a puzzle game enthusiast. Yeah, me too. It's it's so clever. Yeah, I wish wish they expanded on it just a little bit more. Game could have been longer, but uh, still fantastic. It doesn't overstay its welcome. So yeah, now we need to go activate these pads. I, I didn't even mention like these always remember the lot like the way that you activated them. So now that that one is active, I can come place my green orb over here. Uh, we can use that to exit the green orb on the other side of the mist with our red orb. It's kind of funny. If you're holding the green orb on that platform, it just teleports you right back to the same spot. Yeah. When I first played this and I was like standing on that platform with the green orb and I tried to do that, I was like, why isn't it doing anything? We gotta leave our red orb here, uh, back down to one orb, but it's all we need. All we need to finish all these puzzles. It's the most powerful of them. The green orb inside of the green orb. I mean, the red orb's inside of the green orb as well, so you technically have the red orb with you. True, it's, it's along for the ride. It's our moral support orb. Yeah, just a little bit more ferrying here. Uh, like so, like, just like we had that the white universe universe door, uh, where you were like ferrying it across on these little ships. We, now we have the green one. It behaves basically the same way, where we get to exit out of the other side and use it to cross these little channels. Well, we have one more key friendo. Uh, this one is four two three five one. And then. One more Moon Ancestor coming up, right? The last one. Yeah, yeah. 
And this one is, I, I needed a guide for. <laughs> I did not know it was there. I was looking looking high and low. It is very well hidden. Also, this like these little key puzzles do get like significantly more complicated as you go through the run too. Um, so if like this one casually, you're looking at the reflection of shapes in the water to figure out the order of the code. Uh, so it, it does get a little bit more complicated. And just the, the speed run, we, we already know. We know where to go, know what the codes are. There goes our friend again. Yeah, go ahead and free him. Pop out the other side. You want to activate this key before you pick up the orb, because you have to wait for it anyway. And then there is a hidden little marble run here that is very hard to see. And if you don't know it's there, it's like... Yeah, <laughs> I did not know that was there. We let our key friend get eaten twice, but for good reason. We're going to free him out, and then we're going to... Now that our green orb is all the way on the other side of this marble run, uh, we get to use it to teleport over here and free our last moon ancestor. Nice. Assuming that I know how to count for 11. I'm sure we got all of them. I actually have no idea how they verify. <laughs> oh well, that's that'll be Zet's problem for when I uh, submit this run. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'll just have to count them. We're in the last little hub area here. Uh, we have... Now we have access to a another warp pad thingy. and But that warp pad thingy, we can move to the other side. So doing this puzzle, you're like interacting with where your exit of your orb is, where your entrance of your orb is, and you need to get your key friend all the way to the south side. Preferably without him getting captured. Yeah, so we're going to go unlock this door here. Go back out. Grab our orb. Move this platform to the other side. Um, and then this strategy is one that I only recently learned, and I hope I'm doing correctly. <laughs> uh, but there is a place to put this orb all the way down here and when you do that you then teleport all the way back to the other side where I can go rescue my little friendo and then get out of here that is fast I'm, I'm glad that it glad that I did that one yeah I didn't know that was the thing either yeah, but pretty cool strat yeah you would normally just like put your orb on the top side and just like I don't know, run around a bunch. It's very confusing. Yeah, now we just park our orb there because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to be exiting out of the purple orb with our key friend. But for some reason, there's like 10 key gates. I don't know. Be cool if there was like a way to clip through them, but there's not. I mean, we get to watch the cool door animation. Do we? Surely, surely we get to watch this one. Nope. Oh, what are you doing? That one takes forever. We're not, we're not, not doing that one. Not about that life. Well, so now we have all four of our orbs. And we need to pack them. We're going to go four deep this time. Yeah, we need to pack, what was it? Orange in white, in green, in purple? Orange and white, in purple, and green. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I always forget the <laughs> order. I always have to, like, look at the thing where it tells you what order you have to put them in. Or you just have a handy-dandy cheat sheet just off-screen. <laughs> Not that I would ever do that. That would be a... No, no, no. We don't do that here. I, I definitely just have all of this stuff memorized. Cool. Last, uh, last little packing sequence. And this is the final puzzle of the game. Yeah, we can get our green orb verified. They said it's good. <laughs> and we can keep going. Almost at the end of the run here. Yeah, and there's another universe door inside of our sun world. 
which then takes us back into the red world? That's confusing. But now we have no orbs, and we're in the red world. Very strange. I wonder what could happen now. I, I actually don't know. <laughs> there's like a whole lot of, there's like lore and stuff that's happening. You you win, basically. Yeah, you you yeah. beat the game. Yeah, we're going to be coming up on time here in just a, just a hot second here. Um, yeah, I think we have, wait, this is going to be like a pretty good time. I'm pretty sure this is a, uh, this is world record for all moon ancestors. That'd be nice. <laughs> if not, it's a uh, very, very close. So not only a PB. You might have just seen history in the making here on ESA. Time is coming up when this thing is low, uh, raised completely and it's done. Yeah, 135.09. It's, uh, that's pretty good. We are successfully underestimate for the first round of the day. You're welcome, ESA. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, shout outs. Do you have anything you want to shout out? Uh, just uh, the Cocoon speedrunning community. Really nice people and uh, I, I haven't really gotten into it too much, but everyone I've interacted with has been really nice really helpful and yeah thanks guys yeah if you're interested in speedrunning cocoon it's like a very chill game uh there's a lot of breaks just a lot of remembering a lot of good movement uh very fun uh i'd highly recommend it we have a discord you go to speedrun.com slash cocoon you can join the discord there uh but yeah that's really all i have to shout out if you're interested in running the game please join us like we always are happy to see more people in the community yeah, other than that, thank you, ESA, for having me. Um, I know I have two more runs uh, later on in the week, both on Thursday, if you want to want to see more of me. Uh, and you have a run? On Thursday as on well, Thursday. yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right after. Yeah. Uh, right right before right your before. run, I think. But. Sweet, yeah. So watch stream two on Thursday. It's going to be great. But yeah, other than that, thank you, ESA. And let's uh, get off to the next run.